Welcome. I'm afraid I have more bad news for the Grand Solar Minimum Colt. There's going to be no cooling. In this video, I'm going to show you how to gather the data and do a simple analysis to prove that their claim that there's going to be cooling during a Grand Solar Minimum or even during a Solar Minimum is completely false. There is often claims of an association between the Mont de Minimum, i.e. low sunspot number, and lower temperatures. And you'll often see pictures of the Thames frozen over and things of that sort. What they don't mention is these pictures were painted during the Little Ice Age, not just the Mont de Minimum. So is there a relationship between sunspots and global temperatures? I'm going to show you how we find out. The first step you must take is to get the right data. If you want to get the monthly sunspot data, you go to the Solar Influences Data Center, the link is below here, and read in the data as an Excel file. I did it as monthly data, and you may need to convert the columns of text into columns of numbers. Then you do that under the Data tab in the Excel workbook. Next, you need to get the monthly global temperatures anomaly, and I use the NOAA data. Again, the link is below, but you could go to any one of the other ones, Berkeley Earth, NASA, UK Met Office, World Meteorological Organization, and various others. Basically, all the results are the same. Now, this is what your spreadsheet should look like when you finish putting the data in. In the first few columns, I have the sunspot data, the year, the month, and then translated that to year and fraction of a year. In column D, I have the sunspot number, column E, the uncertainty on the sunspot number, and in column F, the days of, in each month, which helps keep track of leap years. In columns H through J, I have the temperature anomaly data. Both these data sets are starting in 1880 uh, January. So in column I, I have the temperature anomaly in degrees centigrade, and then I have that month ranked compared with all the others in column J. In these last three columns, I've taken the things I want from the other two uh, and put them together. So I have the year fraction in column L, I have the sunspot number from column D, and I have the temperature anomaly data from column I. And that pink area that I've marked there are the two quantities that I'm going to cross correlate with one another to see whether there's any link between the two of them. Before we start, we should set our expectations. What would we expect to see under different circumstances? If there is any sunspot effect on global temperatures, we'd expect to see some sort of relationship looking like this, where there's a distinct trend in the data. And the width of that trend shows you how much the global temperature depends on sunspot number. If that spread is narrow, then it's very strongly dependent on sunspot number. If that spread is broad, then there's little or no dependence on the sunspot number. If not, we'd expect to see a scatter plot looking something like this with no specific trend at all and a very large scatter. So in the case of sunspot being related to global temperatures, you'd see a trend. In the case of no link, you'd see no trend. So how do you produce the plot? Well, first of all, you go to the insert menu in Excel. Then you choose the type of plot, which in this case is a scatter plot. And the option in the scatter plot you want is this one here, which just shows the points. When you do that with these data, you get this. Basically a large scatter plot with very little trend. Here's the trend marked with this black dotted line. And you can put the formula for that trend line on the graph, which I've done and it's up here. And you can see for every increase of one in the sunspot number, the global temperature will increase by 0.0002 in degrees centigrade for the uh, global temperature. So that's a very small number. So let's see what an impact that really has for the range of sunspot numbers that we have available to us. Well, let's do some math. The equation for a linear fit is y equals mx plus c, where x is the sunspot number and m is the gradient, which is 0.0002c per sunspot number. So all we have to do is multiply that gradient by the range of sunspot numbers over a solar cycle to get what the difference would make. Now the maximum difference between a sunspot number and a solar minimum is 350. So if you multiply that by 0 0.0002, you get 0 0.07 degrees centigrade. That would be the maximum change that we would get from a variation of a sunspot number from 350 to zero. However, the average sunspot number over the last few decades has been 80. So it's the difference between 80 and zero. So so you multiply 80 by 0 0.0002 and you get 0 
0.02 degrees centigrade. So the 0.02 C in 11 years is equivalent to one year of anthropogenic global warming. And that's all you'd get for however long the uh, grand solar minimum continued for. So one year of anthropogenic global warming would more than compensate for the cooling during a grand solar minimum or during a solar minimum. Well, do we have a warming or a cooling planet? What would we expect with either? If this grey area represents a normal climate, and if we were to warm it slightly, we would expect less extreme cold weather events and more extreme hot weather events. Similarly, if we had cooled the planet, it would be the other way around. You'd get more extreme cold weather events and fewer extreme hot weather events. So let's actually take a look at that and see what the ratios are. In 2018, we set daily high temperature records on 61 1,633 days at various sites around the, the globe. In contrast, we set only 36,378 low temperature records. That's a ratio of 1.7 to 1. So it seems that that would imply that we're getting a warming planet. And that has been the same for 12 of the last 13 years. In that time, the average ratio has been 1.8 to 1 favoring high temperature records being set. I also did the same analysis for the last solar minimum and the last solar maximum. And the ratio of the two is basically identical. Again, showing you that there is no particular effect of sunspot number on this ratio either. Well, let's see if we can draw some conclusions from all of this. I've shown you how to see if there is any relationship between sunspot number and global temperatures. We found that there is none. So all the internet fear porn of wild scale cooling, crop losses, etc. during times of low sunspot number is completely unfounded. We still have a warming planet. We have more record warm days being set than record cool days at a rate of nearly two to one. So when you hear them spouting on about global cooling, little ice ages and things of that sort, you know it's nonsense. Post a link to this video and tune to another channel. Until next time, goodbye.